The 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek is a third row family cruiser that just so happens to be an off-roader. The Rock Creek package includes a suspension lift, different tires and wheels, a roof rack, and a few styling modifications both inside and out. Today, I'll review all of its features, performance specs, and most importantly, I'll do a price reveal towards the end of this video. Now, as I look at this thing head on, the exterior styling promotes smooth edges complemented by a few bold lines that add some curvature. It has a front fascia and grille that's unique to the Rock Creek and the intelligent auto LED headlights with LED running lights is a nice compliment as well. Now, if you look on the wings, you have the heated outside mirrors and then you even have a front parking camera located right here. Looking at the side profile, you have these 18 inch black painted beadlock style aluminum alloy wheels, and those are gonna be wrapped in these Toyo all-terrain tires. You'll have the off-road tuned suspension, the Rock Creek black exterior badging that you can see here. It has some little orange mountains next to it. Looks really cool, makes it pop. And then up top, you have this black tubular roof rack that has a capacity of upward to 220 pounds. Here at the rear of this vehicle, you can see it has a rear spoiler with a bit of an overhang. It has a back windshield wiper, LED tail lights. You have more Rock Creek badging. It also has Pathfinder written out in big letters across the back. And then behind the third row, you have 16.6 .6 cubic feet of storage and then you even have some underneath storage as well so uh, pretty well equipped back here and i think that this is going to be functional for people that are going to be using this vehicle performance wise the rock creek boasts decent performance specifications making it a suitable competitor in its class equipped with a robust 3.5 liter v6 engine this suv delivers a formidable 295 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque ensuring a powerful and dynamic driving experience notably the towing capacity is an impressive 6,000 pounds showcasing its capability for handling various hauling needs with ease. In terms of fuel efficiency, the Rock Creek achieves an average of 21 mpg in the city, 23 mpg on the highway, making a combined 21 mpg, striking a balance between power and efficiency. With a curb weight of 4,605 pounds, this SUV maintains a sturdy and substantial build contributing to its overall performance and road presence. A fascinating detail about the Rock Creek is that Nissan has implemented revised fuel mapping resulting in an additional 11 horsepower and 11 pound-feet of torque when running on premium fuel. This enhancement is what brings the total power output to 295 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque, an exclusive upgrade for the Rock Creek variant. It's worth noting that this fuel efficiency upgrade is unique to the Rock Creek model, differentiating it from other 2023 Pathfinder models, which will continue to operate with the previous 284 horsepower. So the interior of this Rock Creek is pretty nice, I would say, for a Nissan. A couple finishes in here that really stick out to me. You do have a gunmetal finish that's gonna be present here across the front end. Uh, you do have those on some of the knobs. You have it on some of the vents, as well as just some of the other accents within. And then you have this leather wrap steering wheel and that has this orange stitching in there. You also have the orange stitching throughout the vehicle. And this steering wheel is pretty much synonymous to the Altima. I think that this is a great add to the Pathfinder. It really elevates the styling of the interior. So I think that was a really good add. This does have a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster or a hybrid of digital and analog in the gauge cluster. I think that they could have did a little bit more with that. And in the world of vehicles that have a completely digital dash, I feel like they could have went that route instead of kind of giving us this hybrid version that kind of looks a little cheap to me. But again, this is pretty much an off-road vehicle, so I get it, right? Why put all the luxury into it? 
But I will say that this little screen that you do have uh, in the middle here will give you your various vehicle settings. You can do music. You can look at just some of the driver assist features as well and see which ones are active. And you can toggle the alerts and notifications that go along with those. In addition to just tire pressure, speed, all those different things. So you kind of have some options there when it comes to that. And then you do have this blue button here that looks like a force field. It's a blue car, a couple rings around it, and that's gonna basically help toggle those driver assist features. And one of the important things to note about that is when you do have that active, let's say you were backing up towards a wall or a parked car or anything like that, it does have an automatic stopping or automatic braking feature associated with that. So I think that's pretty cool. As I move to the right, you do have this eight inch Nissan Connect color touch infotainment display there you'll be able to uh, control a bunch of different things uh, as far as settings go in this vehicle it does have a, a 360 cam associated with that so i think we mentioned earlier you saw earlier that there was a front parking camera there are also a couple cameras that are located in the side view mirrors in addition to the rear parking camera as well so all of those cameras complement each other i'll get into that in a second but before I get into that um, with, with the 360 camera, one other thing to note with the infotainment screen. So you do have Apple CarPlay, you do have Android Auto, your GPS navigation is gonna be provided through that. I will say that it's not wireless, so that's a bit of a ding for this vehicle. Um, at this point, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto should be wireless. You shouldn't have to plug your phone in. So make sure that if you're driving this car bring your cords to complement that you do have two usb a and two usb c charge ports that you could take advantage of and then as i look below one of the things i want to point out is that around the infotainment screen and just some of the areas down below you do have a piano black finish that also elevates this interior as well you do have uh, a couple storage options so uh, you have this little pocket here and that serves as a really good phone holder or you could put change there you also have this little compartment down here where you could also put some phones um, or other items you do have two cup holders and then to the left of that you do have this drive mode selector so uh, that ranges from sand to mud rut to snow to auto to eco to sport all the way down to tow as i mentioned before this can tow um, upwards of six thousand pounds uh, which is pretty good but with the tow and with the sand mud and rut settings you will notice that the trail cam will pop on so that's what i wanted to save for you so this vehicle does have a bit of a trail cam so if you're going up some tight spaces or you're rock crawling or anything like that then you'll be able to kind of have a bird's eye view of what you're doing um, so that way you don't make any mistakes. So I think that was a really cool ad. One other thing to note is that you have a lot of badging in this vehicle. So you have a lot of Rock Creek badging on the seats. Uh, the seats are like a leatherette appointed seat. They're pretty decently comfortable, I would say. Uh, going over bumps, they, they kind of absorb you. And then you have some Pathfinder badging and some more uh, Rock Creek badging here on the center console. The last thing I'll note is that you do have an additional phone holder or you know whatever you want to use it for over here on the uh, passenger side that's located right above the glove compartment. Those are all the things I kind of wanted to touch on here at the front of the vehicle. Um, I think that's pretty cool um, that they've kind of elevated the interior of this vehicle. And oh, one thing I forgot to note, the two front seats are heated. Thank me later. Let's head to the back. All right, so in the back, you have these second row captain's chairs and they are comfortable. They do come with a little bit of an armrest for you and they recline. Maximum comfort. So, you know, you could be back here chilling while somebody's driving on that trail and it could look like you're riding on an elephant or, you know, just being carried around like the king or queen or however you identify. So uh, another thing I want to point out is that you do have this climate control setting here or climate control panel here for the rear passengers that you could take advantage of. You do have this USB-A, USB-C charge port. You do have some behind the seat storage. Cup holders here on the left-hand side. You do have those same cup holders on the right-hand side as well as two more in this center console that separates the captain seats 
as well as another storage area here if you wanted to add some items, uh, some smaller items there. And look, this slides. Okay. So if you're sitting in that third row, you might get a little bit of extra room, but I would still reserve that third row for small adults and children. So just to give you a point of reference, I'm 5'9", I have pretty decent headroom, uh, pretty decent leg room, and the fact that this vehicle doesn't have a very curvy top allows for that same head clearance in the rear of this vehicle. But like I said, there's not too much clearance between these Clapton chairs and the third row seats. Now, another thing I will note is that this panel here or the center console has a panel on it and if i can get to it boom just took that off and there is a latch in here and if i press that latch this center console is removable so with that center console being removable it's super easy for me to get back down to the third row now Although not my preferred method because these captain chairs do fold down, so you can definitely do that. And I think that's probably an easier go to get to the back seats, but um, I think that's also another option. But you know, if you do have a taller person back here and they wanna sit in the middle in the back, you just remove that and um, you know, they can stretch their feet out. But you do rob the folks sitting in the second row of this little center console, but again, they do have two cup holders on the left and right side, so they're not really gonna miss anything. All right, so here in the third row, as you can see, I have both the captain's chairs moved up, so that's gonna afford me a little bit of room back here. I'm not gonna move them back just because they're gonna definitely hit my knees. But what do you have back here? You have two cup holders on the left-hand side, two cup holders on the right-hand side, and in fact, in my cup holder back here, I have some high chews. I don't know who left these in here, but are these good? Well, put it down below in the comments. Are high chews good? I've never had them. And I don't think I'm gonna have these because I don't eat strange candy that I find in cars. So I'll probably have to buy these another time. Anyway, the cool thing about this third row of seats is you're not limited to just sitting in a 90 degree fashion. They actually recline. So I'm gonna just do this real quick and bring that seat up. And then I can bring my seat up yeah, so now I'm up all the way and just before I was chilling, reclined, but again, I think this is gonna be a, a good seat for the kiddos, uh, but I wouldn't put any adults back here. And then if you want some additional space, these seats fold flat, um, so you do have that uh, that you could take advantage of. And then there's a little pull tab here on the back of the headrest um, that can have that fold down flat so the seats can be a little bit more flush and a little bit more uniform if you are trying to haul anything or uh, make that costco run or put some of those bigger items in here when you're running those errands other than that not a ton to talk about so let's go ahead and take this for a spin so it handles the road bumps really well i'd say so it does have that um, really good suspension for rock crawling and, and trails and those types of things but realistically, I feel like this vehicle is more so geared to the person that wants the, the rugged look and feel that will probably never take this off-roading. You know, they just drive it for the look. Um, I've seen a lot of forums and, and people roast those people, but you know, I'm not gonna roast you, teach his own. If you wanna drive this and it's still your family vehicle, but you want that rugged look, you wanna be that cool dad or that cool mom, you know, all good, no judgment. Uh, but I will say that the all-terrain tires do create a scenario where it does ride a little rougher than I would want it to. And it does feel like I'm driving a Jeep or something like that uh, comparatively. And that's okay because again, this is a rugged outdoor vehicle that you're gonna be using for trails and the like. But in terms of handling uh, it does feel good, so I don't really have too much play in the steering wheel. Where I turn it, it goes. I do have it in sport mode right now, so not a huge kick. You can hear that, uh, but it does have some power to it. I would say that it's gonna be a decent amount of power for anybody that's gonna be driving this vehicle, so I think it works for that. 
uh, plenty of room and space uh, in the cabin uh, for the driver, for the passenger. And I think overall the seats are comfortable. They kind of hug you as you're uh, going over those bumps and things like that. So I will say from a handling standpoint, does good there. From a efficiency standpoint, I would say it's decent. I've been kind of driving this car around quite a bit today and I've probably driven maybe um, close to 40-ish miles or a little bit more than that. And I've already burned through a quarter tank of gas. So I think it also depends on uh, what kind of driver you are and how fast you're driving, etc. But I did have it in auto for the most part all day, uh, with the exception of right now where it's in sport mode. But I would say that this is definitely one of those vehicles that you should uh, consider or have on your radar if you're looking for an affordable um, family three-row off-road SUV. Uh, the starting price of this is a little north of $40,000. So again, this is going to be very good for the budget conscious consumer until next time uh, check out a few of my other videos i have on some off-road vehicles as well as some evs and other suvs as well um, i'll post a couple of those down in the comments but let me know what you think about this rock creek let me know if you're thinking about buying one what's your first impression let's talk about it until next time